Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black with red trim, his official weight, 154 pounds. D'abord dans le coin rouge, portant la culotte noire et rouge et pesant 154 livres. En 21 combats, il a 16 victoires, 10 par KO. His professional record consists of 16 victories, 10 by knockout, in 21 bouts. De Torreon, Coahuila, Mexico, Edgar Nene Ortega. Son adversaire dans le coin bleu porte la culotte blanche et bourgogne et pèse 153,2 livres. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the blue corner, wears white with burgundy. He tipped the scale at 153.2 pounds. Il est invaincu en 9 combats avec 9 victoires, 6 par KO. He is undefeated in 9 professional bouts with a perfect 9 victories. 6 of those coming by way of knockout. Please welcome from Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, Jamonte. Quiet Assassin Clark! Mexican Edgar Ortega. The last four of his last five. Clark is not only tall, he's a tall southpaw. More problem for Ortega. Ortega lost four of his last five, Joe. Not a good way mentally to go into a fight with an undefeated prospect. See the range that Clark has. See if he knows how to keep that range and not fall in with his punches. In other words, pivot on those on those feet. Keep his distance. Get full extension on his punches. Keep his body outside. Where he's at his safe distance and position. And his opponent is not in a safe position. His opponent is in the end of his punches. Plenty of amateur experience for Jamonte Clark. Silver medalist at the 2012 National Golden Gloves. Member of the U.S. Amateur National Team in 2013. For 100 amateur fights. Ortega, decent record, 16 and 5, but four of his wins have been split decisions. One a majority decision. You know, change these to losses, and his record is 11 and 10, 11 and 10 instead of 16 and 5. Just missed with that left hand, did Clark. You know, Teddy, we've been seeing so many vintage Muhammad Ali black and white highlights today. The short shorts, Jamonte Clark. Yeah, that's a good throwback, point. right? A throwback, and he makes me think of a fighter that, except he's the southpaw, and the fight I'm going to talk about is not a southpaw, was not a southpaw, but a fighter that was a great fighter that Ali fought, Bob Foster. You know, oh, tall. Tall, tall, wiry. And a good puncher. Usually wiry tall guys like Clark is usually get good leverage in their punches and have good power. Ortega, the smaller man, drove half his career at lightweight. Oh, and he floors Jamonte oh. Clark. Wow. He just comes in swinging Three. wildly right into the kitchen Four. of the unbeaten Five. Clark, and he goes down. Six. You know what? It's great to be tall when you're on the outside. Not so good tall when you allow the shorter man to get close. Then there is a lot of target to hit. It's like a tall building in front of you. A lot of windows to break. And Ortega just broke one. As unexpected as could be. Edgar Ortega. Just coming forward. It wasn't pretty, but it was successful as he scores the knockdown here in the final minute of round one against the unbeaten Jamonte Clark. Well, if you're 9-0 with six knockouts, as Clark is sooner or later you're going to be tested. Just came a little sooner than he expected. We're going to find out what kind of character he has. It almost kept him there where the right hand could land, but again, you know, it caught our attention how tall Clark was. First thing out of our mouths, can he fight tall? Not in that round. Bernardo was listening in on the corner of Jamonte Clark. What'd they have to say, Bernie? Very basic instructions. Keep your hands up, use your speed. When you punch, you've got to get back out. Forget about getting back out. Don't get in. <laughs> I, I would disagree with that. If you get out, it implies that you got in. If I'm six foot two, I don't want my guy in. I want him on the outside. Can't keep it simple. Stay away from danger. Yeah, keep it simple. 
There's that long jab from Clark. Good looking southpaw, but he was on the seat of his pants in round number one against the seemingly overmatched Ortega, who decided to come forward and scored. You know, I was talking about earlier that Ortega, you wonder about the chin o'clock a little bit. He's in there with a smaller man who put him on the floor. Ortega, smaller, half his career at 135 pounds, only moved up to junior middleweight his last two fights, Joe, while Clark has never been below 146 and has been 153. And he's only 21 years old, so he's still filling out. So really, you have the naturally bigger guy in Clark. It was a good left hand from Jamonte Clark, and now he's on the attack. And a short right hand with Ortega taking advantage of Clark just sitting in the pocket, Teddy. Yeah, standing tall when he's close. When you're the bigger man, don't be tall. Get small when you're in close. Like, you're in here now, get small. Ben, get on the side. Get your head in a place where it's not available. I said it earlier, when you're tall, it's great on the outside. But when the shorter man gets close, a lot of target there. Cutting left, left uppercut, right comes in, battering to the head, Ortega's hurt in that corner, now he wraps up. Hey, come back, come back, come back, buddy. A lot of action here in round two. Edgar Ortega and Jamonte Clark. Ortega trying to fight back as he's against the ropes as Clark has been on the attack for the majority of the second round. Right, right, no punch, no punch, right down. Right down. It's all about geography. Who controls the area in the ring that is be better suited for them? Right now, it's Clark. Clark, another headshot as Ortega was sent back here. Right, right, go. End of round number two. Good action between Ortega and Jamonte Clark as Clark found success. So that is the fight plan for Moderna in our main event against Better Bia. But we got action right here. Good start to the PBC on ESPN as Bryant Perella scored a TKO in the second. And now Jamonte Clark, the undefeated 21-year-old good-looking prospect, went down in the first round against Edgar Ortega, but Ortega's eating more leather here in round three. He was damaged a bit in round two, but fiercely game he is. Well, Ortega's in survival mode right now, you know, dipping and dapping, you know, slipping and sliding, you know, trying to make a mess and looking for a spot to come in. Good, would be a good idea while that head's moving for Clark to place one to the body. Because you go to the body, you freeze that head movement a little bit. You paralyze that defensive movement. Not to yeah. mention, Joe, Ortega's body looks a little soft. It really does there, carrying 154 pounds on that 5'10 frame compared to the long, lean, wiry, athletic Jamonte Clark. He's dominating the early action here in round three. Had a good left hand that was able to split the guard of Ortega moments ago. Ortega took this fight on short notice, about nine days. So you wonder about the condition. Again, you wonder about... Hey. The development of those stomach muscles. How many sit-ups he had time to do. Ortega holding on to that right hand of Get, Clark. Again, Clark in sideways really doesn't belong. But he's tying up Ortega. So he's really negating anything that the shorter man can do on the inside as long as he ties him up. That's what Clark needs to do. Create gaps. And then nearly catch Ortega as he came in. Exactly. Create gaps, entice Ortega, kind of like we talked about just a minute ago with the fight plan. Entice, you want to entice better be able to lean in, to reach in. Clark wants to get Ortega to reach in. Archer better be if will be coming up on our main event. Sensational knockout puncher in the main event here in Montreal. As Clark continues to stalk Ortega, who's off balance, and both men go to the canvas. That is a slip. Those short trunks of Clark you talked about. 
What? They're a little shorter now. Starting to fall down. They're twisted to the side. If I'm with Clark, I'm going to make him watch some Bob Forster tape. The great light heavyweight champion. How he would control the outside. Same body type. End of three. Glad you're with us for the PBC on ESPN from here in Montreal. A night that started with the 10 count for Muhammad Ali. And we have seen action throughout, as is the case here with Cincinnati's Jamonte Clark. He was down in the first round, but he has been on the attack throughout against Edgar Ortega. And he's thinking body a little bit this round, Clark. Again, flooding left hand there. To deal with that head movement. Ortega in survival move, defensive mode, moving that head all the time to avoid shots. Go downstairs, put a little water in the basement, go to the body, stop that head movement. Or faint. Give a little faint, Joe, if you're Clark. You know, act like you're going to throw a punch, get that head movement out there, and then time him when he moves to either side. In other words, find out where he's going to move. He's going to move to his left. Fade him first. Let him move over there. Then you know where to direct the punch. That's smart boxing. That's the sweet science. That's supposed to be the idea when you step in that ring. Out fight someone, out smart somebody. Body language of Ortega not good right now. Not at all. Looks like he's resigning. How about his leg yeah. right there? What happened is yeah. he took a step back. His right leg gave way. Ankle. His ankle. He turned that ankle, Joe. Three, four, four, we'll see if Ortega is able five, to continue here. Six. See, seven, he twisted eight, that right ankle. Okay? See if he wants okay? to continue. Let's see Put. here. Clark is going to come forward as Ortega's on a wobbly right leg. And a thudding left hand comes in from the undefeated Jamonte Clark. Again, Clark has to do two things for me. Use that jab, keep the outside, don't give up that height, and place one downstairs once in a while. Give Ortega credit for steadying himself here. Clearly rolled that right ankle. Was in a lot of pain, was trying to find his footing. And he is just camped out at this near side neutral corner against Clark. And he fights back with a two punch combination for a moment. Now covering up against the ropes. Final half minute of round four scheduled for six. Clark showed me some athleticism a moment ago. Inside. Weave and bend it underneath the shot. Six foot two, you don't see too many guys weave and bend underneath shots like that. That's not safe. Clark pulling back that time from the inside. <laughs> Round five here in Montreal, as Edgar Ortega has been able to survive. This is what happened in the last round, Teddy, with that right ankle. Yeah, he went back. You can see he made a step back, and then his ankle twisted on him. You know, that's why you want to wear those high tops. The old time fighters used to wear, a lot of the young guys nowadays like to wear the low tops, but the old timers always like the high top, give you a little more protection, you know, a little bit more security around the ankle, although he's got high tops, didn't help him. Well, maybe it did help. Maybe it would have been worse if he didn't have high tops. Well, we've seen freak lower leg injuries through the years of calling fights where fighters have not been able to continue. Of course, struggle greatly in defending themselves. But Ortega has stood in there, found his footing soon thereafter, and now round five against the physically imposing Jamonte Clark. As we look at Teddy's scorecard, remember that opening round 10 8 Ortega as he scored the knockdown and now in trouble here in that corner. Again, when you have a man in front of you, like Ortega, who for the most part is just trying to make you miss, the head's moving. Guess what is not moving? The body. It's right in front of you, stationary. Makes a good target. 
a target that Clark has not really zeroed in on yet. The commission here in Montreal is ruling that count there in the fourth round as a knockdown, and once again struggling on that right ankle. It is where the corner has to be ready to stop and look out for their fighter. The corner of Ortega now. Obviously, it's the referee's job too, but for me, ultimately, it starts with the corner. That's your fighter, you know him best. It's your job to protect him. Sweeping right hand from Ortega. Yeah, why? Because Clark gives up his height every once in a while. You, Ortega, physically impossible to catch Clark if Clark keeps his range. But every once in a while, Clark gives up that range, like that, and Ortega can find a little pay dirt. A few times tonight, we have seen the flaws with the unbeaten Jamonte Clark. There he is again, giving up that height, falling in, losing his bounds a little bit. Clark. Remember, he's six foot two to Ortega's 5'10. Again, Clark. And he has that long wingspan there as he throws out that right jab. But he goes into dangerous territory, Clark, giving up that height every once in a while. One round to go. Well, our first fight of the night included two unbeaten prospects, and Bryant Perello left the ring very successful, looked very strong. Jamonte Clark, the undefeated prospect we're seeing here, Teddy, I think is going to have to go back to the drawing board a bit. Some lessons to be learned. He was knocked down in the first round. He's been dominating action against a fighter who's dealing with a wobbly right ankle, and here we are in the sixth and final round. Couldn't agree with you more, Joe. It's always a learning experience when you're a young fighter coming up, and you know, what do you take from it? Right now, Clark, for me, the most important thing is he's got to learn his identity. You know, talk about geography all the time, knowing where that geography is best for you and worse for your opponent. Clark has shown you know, gaps in that understanding. Sometimes standing on the outside, using a six foot two frame and that long reach and that long wingspan, but other times giving it up and paying a little price. You know, he's gotta get a better grip on his identity. Maybe he is part of the answer, Joe. I was just looking here. Clark, in the pre-fight stuff, said that his idols were Floyd Mayweather and Aaron Pryor. I mean, you talk about two completely opposite <laughs> styles. <laughs> wow. Other ends of the spectrum there. Wow, I mean, really. A whirling man. dervish compared to the most cautious, <laughs> thoughtful, defensive speed fighter ever. Exactly. Maybe that it speaks to it a little bit. Clark's a little confused, you know? If he told his therapist that, you know, his therapist would say, you know, you're mixed up, son. you got to make up your mind. As you said, you know, Mayweather, one of the great defensive minds, uh, and Pryor, mayhem, oh. you know, just constant pressure and punches. So much fun to watch back in the day. One of the great fights of all time, one of the classics, his first fight with the great late Alexis Aguayo. And you can see Ortega still wanting even more here. See, I like what I just saw. Plenty. Yeah, what I saw there with Clark, I liked it. You see the way that he, you know, Ortega tried to come in and Clark took a little step out at the right distance, not from too close where he could get nailed on the way out. Took a little step out and kept that range. You know, good for Clark, bad for Ortega. That's what you want to see. I want to see him work on that foot placement, leg placement of Clark, where he's placing those feet. In Look the at Ortega, place. Teddy, saying that's all you got. I've been in with you for six rounds. That's all you got? If Clark wants to land one big shot, I can see where it can come. A little bit of a jab. That's a slip. A little bit of a jab to the body and then the left hand up top. Because I noticed that Ortega, when that jab comes to the body from Clark, Ortega takes his left hand and drops it to block it. You talk about earning your paycheck. You're not kidding. How about the effort from Edgar Ortega? He scored a knockdown in the first round, turned his angle two or three times, had unbeaten tall Jamonte Clark raining down on him time and time again. 
and he goes the distance and was asking for more. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of six rounds of action, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Le juge Leblanc remet une carte de pointage de 58-55. Judge Leblanc scores this contest 58-55. Les juges Blouin et Gauthier remettent des cartes de 58-54. Judges Blouin and Gauthier both scored 58-54. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, le gagnant par décision unanime, Diamante Quiet Assassin Clark. Still a long road ahead for now 10-0 Jamonte Clark, but a lot to look forward to as fun while it lasted against Edgar Ortega. Clark now 10-0 Ortega, his sixth loss of his career.